Alexander Rossi is the 2016 Indy 500 fastest rookie of the year. Alexander, congratulations. And when we're talking fast, we're talking competitively fast. So you're looking, I think, to be competitive on race day after a great qualification run. How's that feel? First time here at Indy. Yeah, good. I mean, I think it was... It was disappointing that, that we were only 11th. I think we, after the week of practice we had, we were expecting a bit more than that, and it was a little bit unlucky that we missed out on the Fast 9 um, on Saturday. But, yeah, I mean, it's like you said, we've been competitive all week, and, and we are looking to, to definitely be in the show um, on Sunday and, and go for the win. Yeah, you were in the Fast 9 a good part of the day on Saturday before getting bumped out, but uh, a great qualifying run nevertheless. And when you look at where you sit middle of row four, uh, that's a good spot. You've got Indy 500 uh, winners behind you. Two-time pole sitter Ed Carpenter's behind you, so you're in a good spot. What about race day setup? Uh, will it be as competitive as you were in qualifying? Oh, yeah, I think so, for sure. I mean, we uh, we did quite a bit of race running. Andretti Autosport as a team does a lot during the week. As, you know, being a five-car team, we have the opportunity to do that. And, um, you know, I think we were, we were definitely strong and, and competitive and had no issue behind cars or overtaking cars. So, yeah, I mean, I, I'm planning on going forward on, on Sunday, no doubt. What's it like qualifying at Indy? I heard a lot of talk from a lot of experienced drivers that it was extremely tough. Conditions were very challenging. What about for you, given the first time? Yeah, no, it was hard. I mean, I think that we had unbelievably good conditions in the week leading up to, to qualifying. Um, so when the, the track temperatures came up and the wind kicked up, it became very difficult. And it was not anything that we had experienced with kind of the, the new cars this year and, and the new aero kits. So, yeah, it was eye-opening. Um, you know, I look back on it and there's things I would have done differently and, and things I wish I had done differently. But, you know, it's like we know, it's, it's all a process and a learning experience. And um, I'm, I'm, like, I'm fairly happy with 11th. But like I said, I think we could have done quite a bit more. You hail from California, so not too terribly far away compared to some of the other drivers from Indianapolis. What's the history of this track mean to you? How aware of it were you growing up? I was very aware of the Indy 500. Um, but, you know, my focus growing up and through my early career was always on Europe and Formula One. And I spent seven years there and, and most of my kind of adult life there. So um, I had I'd really never been to the Speedway in, in any capacity um, prior to, to being here. Um, so it's been, it's been a very big learning experience and eye-opening experience. And, Every day I'm learning about a new tradition and, and some part of history, and it's, it's very fascinating and very cool to be a part of. Winning this race and being an F1 champ are a couple of racing goals of yours, and you've got some good folks behind you that uh, could help you get close to the front by the end of the race. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, driving for Andretti Autosport is, is one of the best situations that any driver could be in, let alone a rookie. Um, and yeah, having Michael and, and Brian Herta, um, you know, available at any time and, and constantly in communication with me um, while I'm out on track is, is a big use. And also having Ryan, Marco and Carlos as teammates is, is pretty spectacular. All have had huge success at this place. And, um, you know, I've been relying on them a lot to, to kind of progress forward. Well, this Fastest Rookie event is sponsored by Indiana Dairy Farmers. How much would you like to see those dairy farmers in Victory Circle at the end of the 500 on Sunday? I mean, it's an ultimate goal for, for anyone that steps into a race car ever. Um, so, you know, especially this year being the Honda Throning, it's, it's quite a good year to do it, and I'll be giving it my best shot. Good luck. Thanks for talking to us. Thank you very much. You're driving number 25. Your brother, Justin, obviously drove that in the race last year. What does it mean to you in the 100th running to be kind of carrying on the Wilson legacy and be in the 500 field? Yeah, no, it uh, means a great deal. You know, it, it's an honor to be representing him, and it, it's driving me to do the best job I can. I'm pretty determined to, you know, go out there and give it everything I've got and, and not give up and just just race and race hard for him. Talk about being in the 100th running. You're obviously well aware of the Indy 500 uh, and the history and when when did being in this race become a goal and how do you feel about being in the 100th? Yeah, well, even a couple of years ago I was looking ahead to 2016 and knew that the 100th running was upon us and you know it was really close. So every year I was trying to be in the Indy 500 and sort of two, end of 2014, I said, you know, 
the best chance I've got is going to be at the 100th running. You know, the best chance to get support from corporate, corporate partners to be involved in the race is, is that race. So I really targeted the 100th to be involved, to be in this race. And um, last year, you know, the, everything that happened with Justin, it could have set me back. And at the same time, it gave me something to focus on and really was a positive that I could focus on. and. and it actually made me work even harder and made me more, even more determined to be in this race. Have a great race. Good luck, and I uh, hope it's a quick one for you, Stefan. Thanks a lot. Spencer Pickett, Indy 500, you're in the 100th running. How long has being in this race been a goal of yours? It's been a goal ever since I started racing go-karts uh, when I was nine years old. I mean, even before that, really, I've been a fan of this race and always watching it, uh, you know, with my family. and. Just the uh, Indy 500, it's the biggest race in the world and uh, it's always been my goal to be a part of it. So it's a, you know, a dream come true to be here and, and the 100th running just uh, makes it all even sweeter. What was qualifying like? It's, I've, I've never heard drivers talk about such difficult conditions as they have this year. So obviously it was very challenging. What about for a first time driver at this track? Yeah, qualifying was difficult. Uh, I think the first day was was pretty tricky. The first run we did was, uh, you know, wasn't able to stay flat out the whole time. The car was moving around a little bit with all the wind. And the second day was a little bit uh, more comfortable for me. Um, we put a bit more downforce in, so it was, it was a little bit, you know, too comfortable. Um, but, you know, it was tricky for your first time qualifying at Indy to have it so hot and the track temperature so high it doesn't help uh, with the grip and then also the wind conditions. So. Uh, definitely have experienced a lot of different things so far. Can you envision yourself this year or some year drinking that milk in Victory Circle at Indy? Absolutely. I think that every driver uh, dreams about that and, and thinks morning. about it. So uh, it's definitely hey, the goal, time. and you know I hope it Good comes morning, through. Good morning, everybody. I'm Debo. Good luck. I'm Thanks. Thank you. Manager. It's amazing to be participating in my first Indy 500, let alone it being the 100s running. So for me, coming into it, I. I have a sort of understanding of how big it's going to be, but it's going to really hit me on race day, you know, how many fans are here, how much of a, a huge, you know, uh, international event this sort of is. Um, and with it being the 100th running, it's just going to be on a huge scale. So uh, I'm really fortunate to be racing in the race. I hopefully will finish uh, towards the front, if not win it. That would be a nice way to, to, to celebrate my rookie year. Um, but I'm just going to try and enjoy every moment uh, that I have. What do you know about the long-standing tradition of the drink of milk? Uh, being here, has it sunk in how important it is, maybe beyond what you knew previously? Yeah, obviously uh, there's many iconic photos of the drivers either drinking the milk or pouring it over their head. Um, I actually got asked the other day what type of milk I'll be drinking. Um, I tend to always drink semi-skimmed, which I think is 2% over here. Um, but I selected for the full fat because I thought after a race of three or four hours you want to you get as much fat and sugars back into you. Well, good luck. Have a great race, a safe race, and enjoy the experience. Thanks, Matt. Thank you for having me. Matt Brabham is running in the 100th running of the Indianapolis 500. Yes, you've heard that name before. There's Sir Jack, Grandpa, and there's Jeff Brabham. And now Matt is in the Indy 500. What's it mean to the family that you're running in this iconic race? Oh, it means a great deal to the family. It's uh, a dream come true for me and uh, you know my dad and, and everyone on my family is very proud. How do you feel about being on the track? Uh, very difficult qualification conditions over the weekend and now on race day you're out there with 33 drivers in total, 32 others. Uh, how challenging is it? Uh, it's very challenging you know that's just what comes to being part of a rookie you know I think you know as many laps as we can do the better and uh, you know, I felt quite comfortable. I haven't had you know any incidents, and uh, you know we've been going quite good with our program. The Paratech team, Murray Crews, doing a great job, and uh, you know I'm feeling quite confident leading into the race. How long is it that you've been hoping to get to this race? Uh, most of my life, I think. You know, ever since I started racing go karts, and uh, you know I grew up listening to stories of my family uh, telling those cool things and experiences over the dinner table, and uh, yeah, it's great to be you know living it and experiencing it myself now. Have you jumped ahead and figured out what you'll do with that bottle of milk when you get it in Victory Circle? Yeah, I think, you know, probably uh, I was thinking that everyone probably deserves a little taste of it. You know, I don't want to be selfish and dump it all over myself like some guys. Uh, there's a lot of people that have got me to, to this situation I am. And if I won, you know, it's great to share it with those people. You know, they're, they're the reason why I'm there. And, uh, you know, I've got to respect those guys. My crew's done a great job. You know, even everyone from the media team that has been promoting me and, and making the sponsors happy and uh, and obviously my dad and my family and, and everyone on the Brabham side. 
Hey, it's great to talk to you, Matt. Have a great run and a safe run on Sunday. Glad you're here. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks for having me. To our rookies, Godspeed.